Welcome. This is what we call a uh, war game post-mortem. We're actually going to look at a game that we just recently played and talk about the strategies and the, and the, 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 the issues we had. To, my opponent for this game was Lance, and I would like to say, say hello, Lance. Welcome, Howdy. Lance. Dude. Thank you. Um, so, so Lance is the designer of the game, and one of the issues we're going to talk about in this game is play balance. Let me start by saying I played this particular game as the blue player, which is the Americans, for the American Revolutions, the Battle of Monmouth. Many times and always lost as the blue player because I was always aggressive to go out and try and attack the British out here in the middle part or something like that. They have a far superior force and they would always overwhelm and destroy me. So I used the tactics this time of what we call running away. And we're going to walk through the game and I can say what I was thinking when I did it and what Lance was thinking. Okay, so here we go. This is the initial setup. After the first turn, after my first move, this is what happened. So what happened is I moved one unit. I was trying to get, this is a, an important point to protect. I moved one unit back here. Basically, I was trying to get everything in this nice, basically, uh, uh, like a hockey stick. It's supposed to be one thing, one straight line here, and then the knee, and then the other one here. And that's what I was trying to do to get behind this river. Lance, I know, is going to come out and try and overwhelm me somehow. So here's a, the end of Lance's turn. If you want to say anything, Lance, this would be the time to say that. Okay, uh, yeah. Uh, you know, Basically, the way that this game uh, works out uh, uh, after a number of plays is, 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 is the American uh, is... Uh, uh, is usually going to try to uh, um, anchor um, his uh, um, his line on the woods and the streams uh, stream uh, north um, uh, of his uh, um, start position, uh, and the British are going to uh, um, try to break his line there because the uh, um, the line on the creek and uh, um, the west ravine is. Uh, um, is a really strong position and uh, um, difficult to force. So the, <coughs> the British will take uh, um, a number of turns to come into contact with the American line, and uh, um, as described, that American line is the uh, um, strongest position if the American is going to try to hold, though the uh, British will almost invariably overwhelm uh, that line in the clear space. Okay. So here's the next turn. This is the end of my phase. <clears throat> One of the things I was actually doing here is I was hedging my bets. You see here, he's going like this, so he's moving up a lot of people to his right flank. He's not sending a lot of people down here to go around my right flank. He's making a move this way. I had seen him do the opposite of that in previous game, so I left you it's back here, and I'm now moving them up in anticipation of him coming around my right flank hard. And so I'll be moving more units up from my, my right flank to my left flank to protect that. And here we'll see his next turn. And you see he's continuing the same thing. You can say more now if you want. Okay, this game is, um, has been uh, 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 only played with the original um, victory conditions and the original victory conditions um, when I design a con game is just basically me taking a flyer at uh, uh, what I hope is going to be even, though generally it doesn't work out this that way. After... Um, after a number of plays, it looked like this game was broken because the British just always win, unless a very, very weak player is playing the British. I would say that that's very true. I lost this game many times trying to win. But I was able to prevail in this game because of the tactics of running away, which is exactly what I'm going to do. So my tactics really were to make this big sort of hockey stick-like wedge and then very slowly retreat towards this thing and try and make him take as much time as uh, I could. 
The game is only eight turns, and one of the advantages in this game, if you want to check the exclusive rules here, you can see the British, um, the Americans will win effectively if the British don't win. And that makes it a lot easier to run away and just not get killed. So that's what I did. The other advantage we have here is that um, the British artillery is only a movement allowance of two, making it slow. So I can run back quite some ways before he'll ever catch up. So we'll go to the next turn and see what he did more. And he's basically doing the same thing. Yeah, uh, Dave, <clears throat> David uh, makes a, a good observation there um, with the artillery. The British infantry units are strong, um, but the uh, American units are actually strong enough to uh, stand up to the uh, uh, British infantry if they're not trying to counterattack. The British really need to get that artillery in um, on the attacks if they're going to uh, uh, break the American line. So the British are really slowed down to that uh, the uh, pace of getting their artillery uh, into action, which fortunately has a uh, reasonable range of four hexes. Uh, yet, uh, David is on to something. Um, this idea of denying contact. And uh, this is a mistake that I've made with victory conditions before. Whenever you give somebody a default win, if the other guy doesn't win, um, you're encouraging one of the sides to run away. And uh, um, as long as somebody can run away effectively, uh, it's pretty hard for the other guy to win. Okay. <clears throat> here is the same thing. You can see I only pulled back one hex, and he's still got several turns before he can um, contact me. So I'm going to not say much this time, and maybe we can fast forward to when we finally have contact. Um, yeah, I notice how far the artillery is behind at this point. They're, they're not going to make it to the American line um, for a couple of more turns or to a range of the American line. And note, the game is now half over. It's the end of turn four. So we'll go to turn five now. And I pull back one more, even more exacerbating the artillery disadvantage. He's going to have only one or maybe two turns at the end of this game to finally attack me. So this makes the, 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 the British side uh, frustrated. Okay, there I am in full contact, and I just can't get the odds to start getting kills without that artillery. Okay. So here, I pulled back one more hex just to be a little rat fake. You now see my hockey uh, stick wedge is now turned in a completely straight line. I've had to, uh, I do have to concern myself with this uh, 2 6 up here. He's trying to go around my flank. And I had to put units down here to make sure he didn't go around this other flank. I think he's going to be able to attack soon. Not this turn. No, anything? no okay. attack this turn. The, uh, y y the, only, the only thing, chance that I've got of putting anything together is getting that cavalry unit, uh, um, uh, getting that cavalry unit behind uh, um, uh, his left flank, uh, my right. Okay. So it's now turn seven, and he's in the first turn of any attacks from either side. I actually did some artillery only attacks here and pushed this unit back here, and we can look under there, and we've got a, another, a no effect effectively. Okay, unfortunately, uh, okay, good, good, we're back there. Um, uh, yeah, what I was going to say is, 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 is that David's doing a very good reaction to that, to, um, to that attempt. Um, uh, on flanking with that cavalry unit, uh, and that is, is he's starting to uh, um, deny his left flank. Okay, so there's no longer the case where I'm going to be able to slip that cavalry unit behind the 4 4 yes, C, and uh, uh, be able to make a surround attack. Okay, that opportunity is gone. So. This was the Atlantis' first attacks, and he had several successful ones. Uh, I, he did kill four 
points worth of my units and we got several DRs. But, but look, I'm out of time. It's, he's out of time. It's the seventh turn. And, and as he stated before, also, when we played this, if I had wanted to even pull back a little bit more aggressively, I had one, two, three, three more hexes of sort of room I could have played with. So here is my last turn. I pulled everyone back again and made more of like a fortified goose egg, like the Battle of St. Vith, and waited for him to come. And then this was his last attacks. And he did make a valiant effort to flank me and everything, but he could only kill three more units with a strength of 16. So at that point, I, um, American win. Because yeah, and I would suggest, that as as David uh, um, as David observed, that uh, um, he could have even he could have even run away more than he did, and uh, um, the uh, uh, and 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 taken even fewer losses. So 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 basically, in evaluating this scenario. Uh, uh, this is, is is a broken game uh, with the current uh, victory conditions. The uh, uh, if the American stands and fights, the American loses. If the American withdraws, the British lose. Um, so you might get some uh, you might get some replayability uh, when uh, um, uh, players. Uh, um, approach this game for the very first couple of times and they figure out that this is the case but uh, um, um, you know somebody that's got a good powers of analysis you know might figure it out right right from the gate um, the, uh, the, the the critical thing is is, is the American figures out that uh, um, you know he can just run away and 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 honestly he should be able to figure that out every time he looks at that victory condition and goes oh um, I can uh, um, win just by denying combat so uh, so something has to happen with this scenario to force the Americans to fight some minimal amount of time, uh, and, and that's going to be that's going to be really rough to do because there's going to be there's going to be this uh, there's going to be this balancing act that's going to have to be played with the victory conditions uh, between what is the amount of time that the Americans have to be engaged and when the Americans can start to withdraw that give the British enough time to get a chance to win but the Americans aren't sucked into a full on stand up fight you know it uh, you know where do you get the sweet spot you know where where each side is um um you know, got a chance to meet an objective. Another thing you could do with this game is if you had a stronger player and a person who is not necessarily even weaker but less experienced, you could play as the American people and not pull back very much and let them have combats. Because just learning how to set up combats and learning about the different combat results tables and stuff like that is a bit of a challenge, and that would be a convenient way to do that. So this could be used for doing that also but yeah uh, and and that uh, that you know that's a, a good point too because the uh, um, you know I was I've, I've thought that uh, um, uh, uh, an interesting thing that we could do with with scenarios is, is, is to uh, um, uh, um, rate them on a percentage basis for each side um, so um, in uh, um, uh, and in this case, uh, you know, rate American um, American offensive chance, uh, you know, very low. American defensive chance, very high. British, you know, offensive chance, uh, you know, high. Uh, um, when you've um, 
you know, when you've got a, uh, a situation like this, um, yeah, you know, go ahead, give the weaker player the, uh, um, uh, give the weaker.